Good morning, Americas. I'm Nathanius. You're watching the StarCraft II World Championship Series Winter Edition. We are ready to start off the second half of our show, even though we've only been live for two and a half hours. As uh, we move on to the Americas Group C, I'm joined by Zombie Grub as we kick off the second half of our festivities today. It's been going pretty quickly, eh? Yes, it has. I mean, PvPs can be very quick, and that's... Yep. What happened? <laughs> and a, a laser brought out some aggro place for those yeah. y'all tuning in to WCS Murica's. We do, of course, want you to know where we are in the tournament. We're in the round of 16. A bunch of players qualified from all over the Americas, aka Earth, and we have rounded them down to 16 players remaining in four groups. We are on Group C. The winning players of each group, two of them, will be going into the round robin bracket stage where they are playing for lots of money. Lots of money, Zombie Grub. In fact, $60,000 in prize pool. The players are ready to go, so let's just show that beautiful prize pool graphic so the people know. Lots of money at stake. Twelve grand for first place. There it is. Beautiful. That's, it's pretty great, honestly. I, You know what? $12,000 sounds really good right about now. I'm going to tell them that we're ready to go then. But, uh, yeah, Neeb versus M. Canning. Yes. To start things off. Two of my favorite human beings on Earth. Yeah. Yeah. Two wildly different personalities, but two They're amazing Cardos players. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, I saw a lot of can fam spam in the chat. Neeb, Neeb doesn't really stream too much. He doesn't quite have the, Not really, no. the meme following. People know who Neeb is, but M. Canning, the, the, fam is, the fam is out in full force in the Twitch chat today. Shout out to you guys. Put five on it as we get ready to jump into this series. We're going to start off on Kairos Junction great map yes basic map it's gonna be a cool pvp these guys actually have some history and you might be surprised by it we'll do it after the, the intros yeah, though. yeah gonna keep you in suspense in the bottom right as the blue protoss for a ting it is neeb faces off against our red protoss in the top left, the undisputed, most handsome, and bestest North American, America's in playing Protoss, putting five on it every day. He is Ev Kenny. Sick. Yeah, so M. Canning. That still wasn't good enough of an intro. I'll try to do better next game, guys. Yeah. If he gets, if he gets into the. You show some respect, this, sir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> M. Canning did recently, well, not recently at this point, maybe like three months ago, defeat Neeb. That is correct. I didn't I didn't miss say that. He defeated Neeb in the PvP of Cheesadelphia. Big upset, but not one that I am necessarily that surprised by, as M. Canning's style is specifically good at upsetting people, <laughs> both in how uh, annoying it possibly can be, yep. as well as just how different it is. So you force your opponent to play to you. We're talking, of course, about the Disruptor. Yes. Uh, the Disruptor, yes. yes. If M. Canning went to Hogwarts, his Patronus would be a Disruptor. There's the Colossus spray up front, only because there's no Disruptor spray. He went for another unit from the Robotics Bay. Yeah. <coughs> well, he loves to wish his opponent good luck, have fun. Yeah. You know? Someone's like, why don't you ever type it in game? He's like, oh, I, always, I, I spray it. Don't say it, you know? <laughs> Which is what everyone should be doing. In StarCraft, yes. Yeah. Both opening up the same way. Um, the matches they played did end up going into Disruptors, uh, and M. Canning was able to close it out. Neeb had his own experience with Disruptors. I mean, at one point, PvP was Disruptor Wars, right? It yep. would have been two years, two and a half years ago, back when Neeb won the Kespa Cup. The brief period of time where PvP was basically just people playing Pong with the Disruptors. Ping, Pong. Yep. yep. <coughs> Except you couldn't smack them back. Imagine if hitting a Purification Nova with another Purification Nova made them both bounce off each other. That would actually be the sickest micro. That is what I need. This. That's what I need in my life. All right, let's get that mod. Let's let's make it happen. All I right. want to I want to see that in the arcade. By the end of the stream, I want to play Disruptor Pong. How is it not already an arcade game? Yeah. That's that should be that should be happening. M Canning sends a probe to the very far left, but Neeb sends it to the less far left. They both have similar ideas. They opened pretty much identically, I believe, with the um, both getting a lot of sentries, hallucinations being sent out, trying to be denied. Uh, some 
somewhat successful. Hold on here. Neeb, Neeb did not see that tech structure, which is a robo. And meanwhile, Uncanny gets the full scout, so a little bit better of a start here for our red Protoss. Mm-hmm. Looking good so far, so good. And uh, I like um, M. Canning's building skins, by the way. M. Canning's rocking the, the flashy stuff as he gets his proxy pylon in the bottom of the map. He's got he's got a lot of the, all the forged buildings. I wonder if he has the new skins yet. I guess we'll see when this robo finishes. I am paying very close attention to this proxy. Otherwise, Lucent Phoenix finally does get in to see that it is, in fact, a robo. But... Yep. On, what's it going to be down He's got here? all the fancy new war chest skins. He's going to hide the Robo Bay so that he doesn't think he's actually doing it. <laughs> That's going to scout M. Canning and be like, no, Robo Bay. Okay. M. Can this must be a fake. It must be an imposter. M. Canning only using 1% of his power. That's uh, I was right. There you go. That's what I was going to guess as well. It's kind of a, a weird thing, though, because you would still assume that you're just, like, missing. M. Canning <laughs> is the fit. only player in StarCraft that proxies a pylon, and you're like, yep, it's a Robo Bay. <laughs> like, well... What else is he going to hide? <laughs> how, how will he build disruptors if he doesn't get a robo bay? Neeb has been using his pylon to warp into depths and just keep them off to the side. Uh, <clears throat> M Canning's starting to kind of do that as well, but the adepts are going to shade in. Yep, they're going to go for the sentry. Pops one off immediately. Tries to go for the second one, but a force field denied it, plus started attacking some probes. Uh, that is enough adepts to do some serious damage. Already a sentry going down is in a lot of gas. Gone and done with, and then eight probes. Uh, That's pretty good. Really good grabs there by, uh, by Neeb. Great use of the adapts. Mm -hmm. Putting himself a little bit further ahead there. Great. I always like, one of my other favorite things when we get to cast the Americas players as well, oh. as, or excuse me, the Americas players, is that we get to see a lot more of these guys do use the skins. They look pretty cool. Yeah. It actually feels like we have two different factions of Protoss fighting each other, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I was wondering where that warp prism was. He had stuck it all the way back. I know tucked in the back. Yeah. So even though we know he's he's going to eventually now he queues up his first disruptor, this was actually like he's still looking to open with like the shotgun immortal play, kind of. He's got the warp prism with the I'll immortal and he's gonna have speed done as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm canning, you know, like, he tried to hide that warp prism. <clears throat> Didn't really work out. It's about to have its speed too, which okay, Neeb will not get to see maybe that would have well that would yeah. have indicated him seeing body. yeah hiding the road the speed is really big because it does look like it's just an immortal drop right that's that's exactly what it looks like to start off and even uh and it is just an immortal drop by the way to yeah. start off but it, it's with speed and he'll most likely follow this up at some point with that the disruptors you can see that Neep's taking a uh, offensive fight to the, the face very seriously he's getting two more shield batteries at the front but now it is seen that it is, in fact, an immortal. Grabs an important pylon. We'll delay a, uh, at least one round of production here. Not that there's any immediate attack. Good harass from the can. Mm -hmm. Got to recover after those uh, those probe losses. Mm -hmm. Creepy pylon to the left side now that he sees it, too. Here comes the attack. And Neeb was correct in getting these shield batteries. He is on his way to plus two and charge. Charge will be done. Yeah, 100%. Just finished up here. Got two disruptors. The third one on the way. Two disruptors can do a lot of damage. Where are they? There they are. The further back. All right, so I don't believe Neeb has scouted that move out. We certainly have scouted the move out. I think he also was kept in the dark about the disruptors. You just have to kind of figure it out, though, that M. Canning somehow, some way, is getting two disruptors. And this comes down to more to, to preparation. Like, how is he going to micro against this? He hallucinates two fake disruptors, by the way, as bait. He's going to throw out those disruptor balls, gets the sentries on the northeast side, but there's still the immortals he's got to deal with up front. He still has the archons barreling down onto his stalkers. Yeah. You know, I'm getting disruptor shots really weren't that impressive. A sentry, a zealot's kind of it, and then the archons just lasting through the literally entire battle, yep. adding so much damage here. Almost got the war prism. M. Canning, not a successful attack. Yeah, that's scary, too, because after a move like this, you'd, I, you would think maybe to pick up the disruptors in the prism and try to buy time but that's not really an option when the robotic when the, excuse me when the warp prism is so low on hit points Neem's gonna follow this up with double stargate presumably thinking phoenix <laughs> so okay so he you know he was thinking what i was thinking but he was also worried about the same thing so he's like i'm gonna send the prism back like i'm gonna attack you but it's gonna be empty yeah neep actually pulled his probes rightfully so <clears throat> no. smart play and neep you know he's, he's you gotta imagine that he's He's really 
looking to get some revenge for that match in Philadelphia, and it seems like he really is reading into M. Canning without even having to really read into him. He was constantly listening Phoenixes to scout, and that's fantastic, but then it also seemed like he did expect that timing attack. That yeah. uh, It didn't matter that he didn't see the robotics bay. Did you see the uh, the article, the TLO article that got posted? I did not read it. I just read about I, it. My favorite line was like something. He's like, um, when I was playing in Europe, I was always known as like the creative person <laughs> trying all these builds. And then I moved to NA, and I realized that all these people are way weirder than me. He's like, my builds is like, that's not even, I can't even do my thing anymore. And uh, I, it always comes back to mind when I see like matchups like this, where a player like Neeb can be really good in the international circuit. But once you go back to NA, you know, any N N A N A player can beat N A N A player. Do you know what I mean? That was very confusing. But I know what you mean. Yes. I, uh, I did read that part of it. Like, if Neeb was in a group with a bunch of Europeans, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, Neeb plays pretty well when he's playing these good standard games. But you put Neeb in a group with a bunch of Americans, and it's like, well, anything can happen. Mm hmm I do feel like Neeb has a stronger understanding of how he wants to play for Sam Canning than the on-the-spot best of... Yeah, the best of seven? Actually, Fear Dragon literally told us, and I forgot. <laughs> Sorry, Fear okay. Dragon. Um, but anyways, you know, he's had time to prepare, he's had time to adapt, and he, he does really seem to be playing more to it. So the Phoenix is something that he, I, I believe he's tried before, just a matter of micring them correctly. M. Canning, his style is all about making those comebacks happen, and it could still happen. You know, so many disruptors two shots suddenly actually hit the heart of the army boom m canning is back in it but neeb is specifically playing to m canning and hitting just before that dark shrine there is a proxy pylon of course so m canning could get some damage done but he, what about this attack how is this going to go yeah, there's so many phoenix it's going to be almost impossible oh, to one less. The throws out the first shot whips second one goes out canceled third one goes out canceled fourth canceled and uh fifth yeah, does get some zealots. Yeah, that hit like five zealots there. And the next one did some damage, but it's just too many Phoenix. Yeah, the uh, Phoenix did a great job getting the ones that were being sent out. GG. Neeb looking dominant in that first game as if he had never lost him canning at all. Yeah, that was a very solid play there from Neeb. Really could feel the, the pressure on him canning after the, the four adepts moved in. Got eight probes in a situation like that when it's just two base versus two base. It's going to be hard. It's in, There's a reason why that composition that Neeb uses is so popular, so good. The Charge Light Immortal Archon, it's really easy to close. You do have to worry about trying to hit those Zealots with the Disruptors because your Stalkers don't really kill the Zealots. So unless you kill the, the Zealots with like a sweet shot right before, yeah. well, then the Zealots are going to get on top of your Stalkers and you can kill yourself with the, with the Purification Nova. Mm -hmm. So it's you have to really thread the needle with those Disruptors. And unfortunately... You said it in the first fight, the two shots that he sent, because there were no Phoenix back then, just weren't very impressive, and nope. nothing, everything just kind of fell apart after that. Yeah, with Nii going for that really fast uh, you know, charge and the Archons already being done, it's a very different battle than if there's like four Immortals, three Sentries, and five Stalkers, and yep. he's playing like a you know, slower in the third base, more normal, perhaps, looking PvP. No, he had the units that make it so hard to actually hit with Disruptors. Those charge lots would always just be barely in front of the Disruptor shot when it was ready to pop. Easier back when the Disruptor popped on the first unit, I think, when the charge lots were all clumped up. But even that still felt really hard to use effectively because the Zealots still chance. get on to you. Yeah. But, yeah. It's, that, it's that, like, you can hit all of them because they clump up, or you can miss all of them because they're speedy boys. Yep. Yes. So it's the disruptor that we have now, the old disruptor. Goodness. Yeah. You see the void's been out for so long. The number of people that are like, I miss the old cyclone. I'm like, what are you talking about? The old one's back. Like, I miss the old disruptor that hit everything instantly. I'm like, no, that w this is the old disruptor. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard saying that. It's I'm not old. You're young. It's been through so many iterations. Um... All right, new Port Alexander, new map in the bottom right as the blue Protoss, our American hero, the real American hero. It is neat. Yep, yep. And in the northwest position, spawning as our red Protoss player, trying to bring it back with those sick disruptor shots. He is M. Candy. The other NA representative. Yes, the other savior of NA. I mean, Neeb 
Neeb makes the big bucks, wins those big tournaments, and Canning represents the flag about as best as any American really could, though, you know? Yeah. He loves his country, he loves his fans, and uh, he loves StarCraft. And he Just loves big balls. Amen. Amen. That's, that's, as, that's as true an M. Canning statement as anyone could make. Yep. And I'm sure we'll see M. Canning's balls again this game as he brings those disruptors out, most likely, against Neeb. Yeah. Sometimes people, people I, and I get asked this question all the time when people talk to me about casting and stuff, and they're like, well, how about, like, why would he still do this? Why would he go disruptors if Neeb obviously expects him to go disruptors? And it's always a weird thing to say because it's like, well, metagaming works because even if you know your opponent is going to prepare and study you, that the, changing your strategy you, to doing something that you're not as practiced with is going to hurt you more than them knowing what you're going to do, right? Right. Like, if Neeb knows that M. Canning is going to go Disruptors, M. Canning can still play well enough to win the game. But if M. Canning decides to do something that he's never done before, he's like, well, I'll M. Canning's like, I'm just going to play Mass Void Ray because then you won't expect it because it's not Disruptors. And then Neeb's like, well, no, okay, well, that's really easy to beat too. And you also don't have practice doing that. That's when things get ugly, so. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that basically sums it up. I mean, M. Canning does not have the, uh, well, you just you have to say that he doesn't have the same skill as Neeb. Neeb, like, yeah. The reason he got so good and it's seemingly so fast is that he just played nonstop on all the servers too. Like ping wasn't an issue for him, and he just. Uh, M Canning is actually pretty good about the ping thing, though. He plays uh, M Canning's from the Eastern United States. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he, I don't remember. He plays Korea. Yes, he does, and he's he does play Korea. GM Korean. Like he he's is a, good. Yeah, he's he's Korean Grandmaster from NA, which is really impressive. It's doubly so if you don't live on the West Coast. Like yeah. If you have fiber out here, you can get as low as like 120 ping at the right time of day on Korea, mm -hmm. which is super playable. But otherwise, further east you go. No, I think he's like Vermont or something. Yeah, he must get like 250 ping or something ridiculous. Well, yeah. Still GM. Well, Neeb is also on Korea. Oh my god, close. I think Neeb plays a lot of Europe though when he's in. He does. When yes. he's in New York. Yeah, he also, I think he has talked about that the ping actually isn't at ba that bad for him in the first place. But regardless, I didn't mean that the MKN was bad. He's actually very good, especially yeah, because he streams yeah, yeah. so much and he talks so much. But it's one of those things where Neeb he's doesn't playing stream Neeb. at all. Yeah, <laughs> like, he, well, yeah, he's playing against Neeb. It's nothing, it's nothing bad about MKNing. It's just you're, you're playing against Neeb. Like, you have to engage your expectations at an appropriate level. Yeah. So Neeb realized there's a, a pylon missing, right? He's wanting to, to know exactly what's going down here. So Lucian Phoenix takes a very oh, good cornery scout. right path there, and he does see that it's just a Twilight Council there, and it is researching, but just to make sure, I think you'd also want the full scout of the main to make sure there's no sneaky dark shrine, which there is not, and he kind of gets a full scout of the main. Um, almost dies. There it goes now, but that was really nicely done. He would have been otherwise maybe confused. He already has a setup in the front base. You know, shield battery, lots of sentries. Oh, he misses the pylon, though. Ooh, M. Canning gets those adepts into the main base of Neeb. And is he going to be able to get too much? Okay, insta-kills that warping Whoa. in adept. Yeah, that was kind of crazy. Um, yeah, the instant pull away with the probes, it means that it's going to be a lot of less mining time, and it still is annoying. You're not supposed to let those adepts in, but... It could have been a lot worse. We've seen today, like, two adepts kill more than their fair share. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, and it, it, like it, it, as you pointed out, it can spiral out of control really, really fast. Mm -hmm. So Neeb, he's got an immortal coming out. Blink is almost done for him canning. He's getting plus one attack. And I guess he's going to start a robotics bay at some point when he can afford it. He almost has the money, all right? Or he does, ish. Okay, he's going to build his immortal first. Mm -hmm. Maybe he won't go disruptors this game. I gotta figure he's a, he's gotta basically I think he has to go into him <laughs> but Harry starts to charge. Unfortunately it's gonna be found out. Neeb does take the time to go find sucks. the toilet console. That's a really good snipe there. Delay charges maybe the most I feel like for a lot of matchups, charge is one of the most important upgrades. Yeah. The utility that the zealot gets from that upgrade is I feel like it's almost better than most of the other ones that you could get. Like Blink is nice. Like Blink is nice, but Blink doesn't really win you fights in PvP. Not like it used to. But like charges 
Charge is like a warm <coughs> blanket, you know? Yeah. You got to have it. I'd say it's as an upgrade goes, it's most important. And then yeah. maybe in the back of that, as a structure, the Temple Archives would be quite important. Yeah. Which Mim Candy makes sure to, to throw down before that Twilight Council even died. He replaces Twilight Council, too. So the timing of his charge isn't so poor. Um, it just it does suck that he had to be found out like that. Yeah, funny enough, M. Kenning still has charge started before Neeb. Neeb got an extremely late Twilight Council in this game. Well, he did see that there was researching Link proxy. You may assume that there's going to be an attack with that type of, of strategy. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fair. Yeah. Going for Immortals is a good thing to do there. And Drop grabs three probes, pulls out. Yeah, speaking of which, an Immortal and two Stalkers. An odd pairing, but... Yeah, grabs a couple, gets out. There's no Stargate from M. Canning, so he can't really do much about that. He does a blink, obviously, so you gotta be a little careful, but. Um, a lot of hallucinated Phoenix scouts today. Yeah, well, I think that's. <laughs> if it started with just the, the century opener, right? And you're like, oh, okay, that's gonna be the new standard. And then and now it's with the three centuries in total, right? That's been following yeah. up today. So. I find it funny that there's even more centuries doing more hallucinated Phoenix scouts when. That was like a, wasn't that like a whole big thing where they ma they made the sentries take less energy to do hallucinations so that yeah. one could do the job yeah. better? But there we there we have it. The world is a strange place, Zombie Grub. <laughs> I think a lot of the uh, complaints from Protoss in, in this matchup was that it, it could be like difficult to see exactly what your opponent's doing and consistently getting Lucid Phoenix out even sometimes isn't reliable. Yeah. Saw that with uh, Showtime a little bit. So. They are still checking around, seeing the army positioning. The, you know, if you send an observer across the map, it's going to get sniped by their own. That's how it goes. So you're just depending on that. Neeb is not going into plus two quite yet. He is stopping his worker production. His base isn't quite done yet anyways, but no. I'm just wondering if he is maneuvering out here to actually do a push. I think so. Could be. I mean, he's got to be feeling pretty good about the way that this game's been going so far. Hasn't really taken much damage or anything like that. He's done a bit of poking and prodding Tim Canning feels good about the harass that he's been able to accomplish. Mm, there's the army. He's moving out with a big army. That one Zealot's going to see it. It's and let's find out. Is he going to Is he going to push in? There's two shield batteries. He's adding more. He's warping in more Archons. If Deep goes right this second, some of the army won't be available. And he is going to He's going to start pushing in here. Good Guardian shields. Great spread on the Zealots for Neeb. It does look like he has quite a few more units. He's going to hallucinate some Immortals in this to mess with the AI of his opponent. Plus two just finishes for M. Canning. Unfortunately, he's already losing so many of his important units on the front line. Now using his, losing his sentries. It looks like Nee will be able to punch through as he doubles the army supply. Still has his Warprism alive, too, for some really sick micro on that very, very low Archon. And a couple of charge out warp ins will do the trick, I believe. That's going to be it. M. Canning down to nine army supply. Nee punches it in for America and takes the first series of the day. Ladies and gentlemen here, for WCS Winter, Neeb playing PvP. Another another player who's, I think, his PvP's kind of just gotten better and better. Yeah, yeah. At one point it was his best. At some other yeah, points it might have yeah. been his worst, but he's generally good. And uh, the the expectation, if he did not know about the results in November or December or whatever it was, is that Neeb would win. Yeah. But there was that chance that M. Canning would be able to do another upset. It just, uh, Neeb seems to have just, like prepared for this. He's like, it's never yeah, happening yeah. again. I'm never Neeb's, losing I'm canning again. He's never letting that happen again if he can help it. And uh, well, he, he can help it by, by preparing and practicing and all of that jazz. So that's the winner of our first match of the day here. Group C for Chicken. Bacock. Bacock. And here's the rest of the group. Next up, we've got Neve versus Puck. Taryn versus Protoss. I know you guys didn't get enough of it yesterday. And uh, especially since we won't be seeing any more Terrans in the European groups that we've got coming up. That's coming up next. TVP, Puck versus Epic. You're watching the World Championship Series.